Hey, 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 welcome to another Money Today. Well, I got another home dinger for you today, and I'm back on Oasis. All right, Oasis, I think, is probably the most connected coin maybe that I've ever seen. I can't, to the life of me, think right now of one that's more fully worldwide connected than Oasis. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I am saying that as the story is going right now, I think it would be the best bet. And that's just my feelings on it. Uh, it's it just take a look at this mind map. All the things we've talked about on this channel for so long are all connected right here. And ones that I didn't realize it was just last week, and subscribe by the way if you really want to know all about what's actually happening in blockchain, without the hype or whatever. Because I'm not, I don't, I'm not pimping uh, Oasis. You know, it's just the fact that I, this is what I see. And if you guys see something different, let me know. But this is what I'm seeing. And I do all this work so that I could show you. So, in fact, I would go back months and months, maybe six months ago, and just start watching my videos because you're gonna learn so much about how this is all connected. But let's get on with it. Oasis Labs Protocol Foundation, whatever you wanna call. I was looking up Tim Draper and Oasis because I felt like it was the only thing missing because it's connected to the big three, right? You know, we got the Linux Foundation over here, uh, more ways that the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance is connected to. So it's really, you know, with the Confidential Computing Consortium, we are seeing its connections to R3 as well. So that's pretty much, from what I can tell, the complete infrastructure of the future of the internet, Web3, whatever you want to call about it. Everything is going through those three. And one of them just happens to have a three in it, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> but anyways, R3 is the banks. Linux Foundation working with DARPA, working with the U.S. government to create Web3. And the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance working with, you know, Microsoft, JP Morgan, etc. We're going to get into that here. So, as I said, I looked up Tim Draper and Oasis. It, and he's one of the biggest founders of, you know, everything. And I didn't see that he was involved. I couldn't find it. Then all of a sudden, I'm looking at my Twitter feed, Oasis $160 million ecosystem fund launch event. And of course, the first thing I look at is who is involved and where are they from? Now we talked about NGC Ventures, which was in the last episode, which you should watch all of my Oasis videos if you're into Oasis. But we're going to get into them again, right? I'll go through Dragonfly as well. But the thing that really caught my attention over here is Andrew Tang, Draper Associates. As I'm looking through this, we will be holding the first ever panel event with members of our $160 million ecosystem fund. They'll be talking strategy for the fund where they see the future of blockchain going and what the critical components we need to build for Web3 to seize more market share. And believe me, these guys know how to do that. I think you're gonna be completely blown away. Now, I don't know if you know who Tim Draper is. Basically, you know, one of the biggest investors in the world. As it says right here, the third in a familial line of venture capitalists and government officials. The insider's insider here. You know, former chairman and president of the Export-Import Bank of the United States, his grandfather served as the first ambassador to NATO. So a very, very insider family. Draper was the first Silicon Valley venture capitalist to invest in China through the global fund DFJE Planet in 2001. Now remember, that's about when Jim Breyer got involved in this as well through IDG Capital. Draper negotiated with Robin uh, Lee of Baidu. Now, there was an article that I read about Tim Draper meeting with all the people from Baidu before in Silicon Valley. Robin Lee is from Silicon Valley, right? He came from China into Silicon Valley 
meets up with Tim Draper, and then all of a sudden they start the Google of China. So Tim Draper starts the Google of China. Now, you know we have talked about this many times in the past, that Baidu was started by Jim Breyer and Tim Draper. See, Jim Breyer uh, is all three of his investment arms invest in Tencent, Baidu, and Xiaomi, all of the digital infrastructure for China. So if you haven't figured this out by now, anybody telling you that somehow China and the United States are at odds with each other, it's just not true. All of these insiders have been funding what is today China. It all came from the West. The funding came from the West, but nobody will talk about it. So you see Jim Breyer, Tim Draper, in at the beginning of Baidu, which is Google's China. Both are from Stanford, interesting enough. And Draper Associates is funding Oasis Blockchain Fund. Now, of course, Jim Breyer is also, through Excel Partners, investing in Oasis Labs Protocol Foundation. And as you saw in the last episode, this is all a tight chain. You got Mark Andreessen there. What I find so interesting, and you're going to see later, uh, Tony Tao from NGC Ventures, uh, also a very, very early Bitcoin investor. So is Mark Andreessen, and so is Tim Draper. So you see all of these guys, they knew what Bitcoin was going to do way before it happened. Insider information, I am guessing. So let's keep moving on. We go on to NGC Ventures, which I did talk about uh, early in the last video. Proud to back consensus before Web3 becoming common sense. So here we go with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance backing Ethereum and consensus, which is JP Morgan consensus right from the beginning. And as you can see here, Christine Moy, JP Morgan, Herb Act saying J.P. Morgan was there. Well, actually, uh, Joseph Lubin saying J.P. Morgan was there before the mainnet launch of Ethereum. Now, that's really, really huge. J.P. Morgan, of course, helping to create the Federal Reserve Act to begin with. Now at the beginning of the Ethereum and all of these insiders investing in Bitcoin early on. Remember my theory that the government, the banks, whatever, all created uh, Bitcoin. It's a perfect idea. You get all the people who hate the banks involved in Bitcoin and you make them rich. And there you've, you've already taken care of all your enemies. Well, just a thought. Anyways, as we went through NGC Ventures last time, uh, Tony Tao, Tencent, Ting Yuan Think Tank Group. Well, Tencent mentioned again. There's Jim Breyer started that. And also, he's participated in multiple digital asset ICOs such as Ethereum. Very interesting. So this whole team is very interesting. As we see in the mind map, very, very tied to the Chinese government. NGC Ventures, you got Tony Gu, Wayne Zhu, Tony Tao. You can look all this stuff up. It's very easy to find. All linked to Chinese banks and state-run funds, as is Dragonfly Fly Capital but we're gonna get into that next. And Tony Tao, back at the beginning of NEO, while well, he was a like, CEO type thing of NEO, and in early on Ethereum. So it's just a really tight knit group here, isn't it? With everything you talk, and for you watching this video for the first time, say you haven't seen the other videos, you have to realize how connected this is to Facebook. Facebook AI, AI Meta, DM, Libra, all the stuff. So I'm not just talking about, hey, this is Chinese capital in a nutshell. These people are tied to probably the future of everything in the United States, which would go through DM, Libra, or Facebook, or Meta, this whole thing. You sh it's just stuff you should really know and really be paying attention to because it literally is the future of everything. And as I just mentioned, Tony Tao, I'm gonna put this in the description. This is a podcast of him talking about his getting in the beginning of Bitcoin and just who he is. And I think that if you really want to get an idea of, of how huge this is, this is, this is a good podcast to listen to. 
Now let's move over to Dragonfly Capital. And we look at the big picture here, and I just looked up Bo Fang. And the only thing that comes up when you talk about Bo Fang, Yuan Ventures and Dragonfly. So what is Yuan? I looked that up. There, there's so much to go into, but I'm trying to keep this video somewhat short. But you realize this is really tied to the Chinese government, Chinese banks, and you just look up Anna Pang, right? China National Nuclear Corporation. But when you look at the education from these pe people from Yuan, you're over and over and over going to see educated the United States, Cambridge, a lot of Columbia University, which I usually see when it goes to three-letter agencies, just how I see it. So more Oasis news. If that wasn't enough, introducing Yuzu Schwab, the first DEX built on Oasis coming soon. And you're going to get an airdrop. Now, you can't have this on an exchange to get the airdrop, so you're going to have to learn a little bit more about this. More on the airdrop, it just follow the Oasis Foundation. I'm sure a lot of you do. Why? Fees 99% plus lower than ETH, throughput, higher, privacy. You know, I've heard a lot of this before. If they could actually make all this true and easy, of course, it's going to just be the biggest winner instantly. So something to keep your eyes on. I've been let down by a lot of DEXs in the past, so let's see how this goes. Obviously, they're tied to everybody and everything. So I just, uh, you know, I... Like I said at the beginning, Oasis just seems so insanely connected that, <laughs> and it spells it all out right here, to everything I've been talking about for a year now, that Rose is probably the one that I would pick the most as far as being the most insider coin. Uh, and that is saying something because so many of them are. But they're connected to all the major people and all the major uh, corporations or institutions that I see shaping the future of the internet. So that's something, uh, again, I'm not saying I'm glad it's happening, but it is. So I just saw this too, Hugo Boss put this up. Monday Today Show happened right across this. It's just that I am, I guess, one of the top influencers when it comes to Rose, but uh, I don't always say nice things about it, but I will give you the best information I possibly have. And hey, I'll let you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is not a shill channel. Um, I am not here to try to, you know, Sheba to the moon or something. This is about fundamentals and about how I really see the future of the internet shaping up. And uh, it's, it's pretty important. So, again, subscribe, follow it on, and make a comment. Let me know if I'm on the right track or off the, the right track. I mean, you know, so far nobody's really uh, been able to correct what I'm saying here. So I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.